the Goldilocks zone principle. How do we use this for faster healing, less or optimally no healing reactions? So let's just let's just jump straight in. I'm gonna if you've heard of the, like the Herxheimer reaction, the healing crisis. If this is a type of thing you've heard of and you kind of subscribe to, I'm blowing that up today. We are completely debunking that. It is a myth. If you're having a Herxheimer reaction, if you're having a healing crisis, this is not a good thing. This is a really bad thing. This is, this, you really need to stop doing this. This is not helping you heal. So what is the Goldilocks zone? And how did, how did it get this name? So this is something that I like made up, right? This is something I created, but I see it over and over again. And it's a really good principle. So think about the, the, the child's tale. Goldilocks and the three bears. So little kid goes into the house, tries to steal the porridge from the, from the bears. She doesn't want one of them because it's too hot. She doesn't want another one because it's too cold. And then she has the last one because it's just the right temperature. We're trying to apply this principle to healing. So these are different individuals. So this is person one, person two, person three. And for them, their Goldilocks zone is different. They're gonna have a different sweet spot for healing. So let's take the first person up here, for example. Anywhere, if, they're, if, if what they're doing, so they're, they're implementing approach, so they're taking a probiotic, or they're doing juicing, or they're taking some kind of herbs, or they do anything. What they're trying to do is get into this range here, this little green zone. If you're in the green zone, you're healing. You're moving towards a higher level of health. If you're in the green zone, if you're out of the red zone, you're not healing, you're actually making yourself sicker, you're actually increasing your disease. And what's really interesting to notice is you have red on both sides of this. So if you're doing too much or you're not doing enough, you're not healing, you're actually making things worse. And I, so if you're having a, a healing reaction, a Herxheimer reaction, anything like that, you're on this end, you're moving up this end of the spectrum. So you're, you're going too high, you're pushing yourself above your optimal healing zone and it actually slows you down. Not only can it slow you down, but if your healing protocol, if the, the people you've been working with or the strategies you've been implementing, the things you've been trying, the supplements you've been taking, constantly you're, you're forcing yourself to do a higher dose than makes you feel well, you're actually keeping yourself sick. And I know that sounds kind of difficult to hear if, if that is you, but this is the problem. It, it's about calibration. It's not just about find the thing that's gonna help and then just, just, just do it. You have to calibrate it right. And if you get it in this zone, you're gonna be healing. But the Goldilocks zone has a sweet spot. So this is like the healing zone, but the Goldilocks zone, we've got this little purple asterisk, this star, this is the star spot. This is the sweet spot. This is where you're at the top end. So this is like this upper, like five or 10%, this small little bit up here of the green zone where you're, you're healing as fast as possible. You've pushed yourself to the absolute limit of this green zone, but you're not going into the red. This is like when you're taking a probiotic supplement and you're trying to calibrate your dose. If you don't take enough, you're down here. So you're not actually healing. If you take a good amount, then you might be here. You're healing, but you're not healing as fast as you could be. You're like, okay, well I wanna go faster. So you double your dose and then you end up here. Not only does that not move you closer to healing, it actually makes you more sick. It's actually not helpful. When we try to force the body to do something that it doesn't actually wanna do itself. So when we're imposing a, supplement, a treatment, a healing modality, anything. Whenever we impose this on the body and you don't feel better when you do it, you're forcing your body to prioritize doing something that it doesn't want to prioritize doing. Your body is so much smarter than you. We've got more principles down here that we'll talk about. Your body is smarter than you. So you want to work with it. True health, true healing, true vitality, strength, immunity, energy is going to be found when you work with your body because your body is smarter than you are. If you push it up to this limit, you will feel worse and you're not healing. You wanna to get to here, this purple dot. So you're right on the top limit of this little green zone. That's where you wanna be. But this is different for everyone. And I've got a few examples for you here. So we've got P1, P2, and P3. These are different individuals. P1 is like the, the, standard, the standard kind of person. They're, they maybe have one or two chronic health problems. They're definitely not healthy, but they're not debilitated. The thing that you'll notice about here is the green zone is kind of in the middle of this spectrum. It's quite decently sized. So they've got some level of flexibility with trying different herbs, supplements, treatments. This could be like coffee enema, this could be ozone therapy, this could be cryotherapy, heat therapy, this could be castor packs. this could be anything, okay? This is applicable to every type of therapy. And this is why I'm saying this is a metaphysical principle because you can apply it to everything that you do. So they have quite a good level of tolerance. So even if they're not that in tune with their body, you might be able to just 
kind of guess and get it right. And you might be like, cool, we landed here. So that's quite a good place to be. And then you try another modality and you land here. So it's like you're still in the green zone. You're healing. It's helpful. And what happens is as you're healing, this zone moves up and it gets bigger as well. So we're going to talk about that in this one here. But now we're going to talk about where I was and where many people probably are. This is where you're really ill. So you can see your, your Goldilocks zone is, is, is very small. The diameter of it is tiny, you know? It's really, really small. It's really hard to get it right. It's really hard to stay in this zone. It's either you're probably doing not enough, so you're not doing enough to move towards healing, so you're getting more sick, or you've got this whole spectrum that goes all the way up here. If you do anything that lands on this scale, anywhere up here, you're also not helping yourself, you're making yourself sick. The best thing you can do is get to this point right here. So it, it's not that far along. You're not making that much progress. It has a very small momentum, but that's the upper limit of what's actually helpful for your body. And you always know if you're coming out of this window of tolerance because you feel bad. If you're having a Herxheimer reaction, if you're having a healing reaction, if you do something and it makes you feel worse, you're doing it wrong. Either it's not a helpful thing for you, it's not helpful therapy, it's not helpful supplement, it's not helpful food, it's not helpful modality, either it's not helpful or you've got the dose wrong, either it's not strong enough or it's too strong. And if you're in this category here, so this is like chronic fatigue syndrome, if you've got two or more autoimmune diseases, if you've got, so chronic fatigue syndrome, MS, severely debilitating conditions, you know, if you're on disability of any kind for your, for your illness, this is probably where you are. You have such a small range of, of tolerance and it's more on this side. So it's gonna be anything you try, you're, the dose that's gonna work for you is gonna probably be really, really small, way smaller than a normal person. So the example I always use here is probiotics because first of all, probiotics are an essential part of all healing programs because all disease starts in the gut, all gut disease involves the microbiome. So probiotic, as far as I'm concerned, regardless, like you've got your SIBOs, your candida, like probiotics, they're necessary, regardless. Yes, you have some level of detail, which we're talking about here. Obviously, if somebody that has a problem here takes this level of probiotic, they're gonna feel really awful. So it's about calibrating, but probiotics, universally applicable. So I'll use that as, as the context because, well, I use them a lot and the reactions are very, very evident. Either you take a, a probiotic and you don't notice anything, and you're taking a probiotic for a very long time and nothing's really happening, it's because the dose is over here. It's too small, it isn't making any difference. What's more likely is you take one that's too big. So if, you, if you've got these severe chronic health problems like me, chronic fatigue syndrome, I had that. The dose that I had to start with with probiotics was, so I'd use this very strong probiotic powder, it was like a sprinkling, so I would get a really sharp knife, stick it in, the tiniest little bit that would come on the end, I would sprinkle that into some water, mix it up and then drink half of it, you know? So I was getting like the tiniest dose and that was what was necessary to keep me in my little threshold of tolerance. Pushing above this does not help you. It is not helping you. We've, we've so, I feel like even alternative and holistic healthcare has really put this emphasis on like, if you're not suffering, you're not healing, just push through it. That's not healing. If you're pushing through, you're not helping yourself. So stop doing it. You, nobody wins. You feel like shit. You don't move yourself towards healing any quicker. Just stop doing it. It's not helpful. And you're the one that suffers the most. You need to find the upper limit of your safe zone. So what's the highest limit of the probiotic that you can tolerate and still feel okay? That is health. That is moving towards healing. We're going to talk more about that principle here. Finally, we've got uh, somebody that's quite healthy. So. I would put myself between this one and this one. So I'm definitely not here anymore. I'm between this one and this one, which is quite a nice place to be after being here for like five years. So now I'm kind of like, I'm a mix between this one and this one, which is a really nice place to be. It's a, it's a progression. What you'll notice about this one is the Goldilocks zone is very big. You can see this is, it's huge. So they can try lots of different things and they'll all still be helpful because they generally have a very high level of tolerance. They're very healthy. So. This is, this is like success breeds success. If you, have, if you have high levels of health, it's easier for you to get healthier because the things you do are more likely to fall in here. Like this is like maybe what, 5% of the total of this? This is maybe what, 15? This is like, this is like a third. So there's like a one in three chance when you try something, it's gonna work for you regardless of the dose because your zone is just so big. So that's really important. But what's also important is notice the distribution. It's really high up this end. So this means you get more gains from it. 
So the things that you do, they give you more benefit. They're going to, you're going to reap more reward from the things that you do because you can tolerate higher dosages of them. So somebody at this end might take a probiotic and they can start with half to a full therapeutic dose straight away without negative symptoms. Fantastic, that's great. You've landed right in, in this zone. And optimally, again, the Goldilocks zone, the sweet spot, so the, the, in, the, in, the, in the, um, the child's tail, it's the, it's the just right, you know? The, the, the way the tail goes is you try, the, the little girl tries the hot one and it's too hot and she tries the cooler one and it's too cold and she tries the one in the middle and it's just right and that's what we want. So up here you're too hot, down here you're too cold. This is the Goldilocks zone, this is okay, you know, you can eat this, you can eat this porridge and it's fine but this is the sweet spot, like this is the, the, the place where you're getting the most healing, you're moving towards being healed as quickly as possible without any negative reaction. The sweet spot is right at the end, this upper limit, it's here. This bit here, this bit here, this bit here. It's the sweet spot, it's right at the top of the upper limit. But this changes, as I said, this was me five years ago, this was me maybe a year ago, and now I'm in between this one and this one. So this is something that I like to, so this is a principle I use myself and with all of my clients and students. Because once you learn this principle, you have it for life, and this is, some, this is a skill you need to learn. You need to learn based on how you feel whether the thing you're doing is in the Goldilocks zone or not. Because if it's not, you're not healing. You're not helping yourself. So this is, this is something that I like to teach people. This is why I'm doing this video for you today, so you can learn. If you do the thing, you take the supplement, and you feel better from it, you are healing. If you don't, you're not healing. You're making yourself worse. You're, you're either doing something completely wrong, you're doing something you shouldn't even be doing, or you have the dose wrong. Either it's too hot, it's probably too high, or if you didn't notice anything, it's probably too low. You need to find that sweet spot right in the middle, which is very difficult if you're very ill. It's, you have a very small zone of tolerance. It's a little bit easier if you've started having some success. And if you're already quite healthy, it's quite easy. You probably don't need any help with that, but maybe you do because this is a big zone, right? So you could be doing things in your healing process. Maybe you're only here. So it's like, yeah, you're still healing, but look at all this mispotential. You know, this is, this is what I call low hanging fruit. These are like easy things that you could implement into your, into your lifestyle, into your healing regime that give you like massive results and they take very little effort. You just need to, they're, they're low hanging fruit, right? You just need to go up to the tree and just pick the, pick the fruit off the tree. So you've got so much more you could be doing. So at, at any point, wherever you are at the beginning, the middle or getting towards the end of your healing process, Understanding the Goldilocks zone principle is really important because it just makes everything so much faster. And the thing that's most important is when you're in this zone where you, you feel worse, you're not healing and you feel awful and that's your body. Your body is smart. Your body has biofeedback mechanisms. It tells you how much salt it needs by telling you how salty your food tastes. And in the same way, it tells you how much water it needs by you being thirsty. So with these biofeedback mechanisms, this is quite simple. But to extrapolate a step further, if you try something in your healing process and it makes you feel really bad, you're moving towards sickness, not towards health. If you do something and you do it in the right zone and it makes you feel slightly better, you are now moving towards healing. You optimize your healing process by being in a healing energy. You get more of what you already are. This is the next principle here. You become more of what you already are. So if you keep doing things that put you in the red zone, you keep shrinking your green zone smaller and making yourself more and more sick. Whereas if you do things, even in this small window of tolerance, if you start doing things that make you healthy, that make you more functional, so say I'll use the probiotic for example, because it was a really good example for me with chronic fatigue syndrome. If I took a, a probiotic dose that was in the red zone, so I took something that was too high, I couldn't walk, I would feel moody and depressed and suicidal all day, and I really just didn't enjoy my life. That is not, the emotional and physical state of a, of a healthy person. Whereas if I took the right amount, which was a very almost stupidly, seemed ridiculously small dose, I felt okay. I, didn't, I, don't, I wouldn't say I felt good because I was, I was working with a very, maybe it was even smaller than this, you know, my window was tiny, it was tiny. It was, maybe it was like this, right? So I've got this little tiny zone here of green. Let me get my green pen. So I have this little, little tiny, tiny, weeny, weeny, weeny green zone. So it's really hard to stay in that. And obviously it's not possible to stay in that every time, but as long as you're spending more time in the green zone than out of it, you're healing. That's what's, that's what's important. So we just need to stay in the green zone as much as possible and you'll move towards healing. 
And as your green zones get bigger, we need to make sure you're at the upper end so you're healing as fast as possible. You become more of what you are. If you stay in that green zone and you are as healthy as you can be in the present moment, even with whatever health problems you have, you are moving towards health. If you are doing things that make you feel worse, so if you do breath work, if you do acupuncture, if you do uh, some type of, even like trauma therapy, if you do a trauma therapy and you feel unsafe and re-traumatized in the process, you are not healing, you are re-traumatizing yourself. You're making yourself more ill, more diseased, more sick. So this is really important because if you're putting the effort in, so if you're spending the money on supplements, if you're, if you're paying practitioners, if you're doing things, you're putting effort into it, I want you to actually get the result that you're looking to get at the end of it. You're not doing it, you're not trying to heal for the sake of trying to heal. You're trying to heal to, to, to be healthy. So it's really important that you implement these principles properly. A another note on practitioners as well. If you work with a practitioner that says, this is gonna be hard, you're going to be having Herxheimer reactions, you're going to be having this, you're going to be having that, and you sign up for that, then you're gonna get exactly what you expect. You know, that's what you've agreed to. And if you work with somebody that says like, your case is really complicated, this is gonna be really difficult, I don't know if this is gonna be possible. That, that's exactly what you're gonna get. Whereas if you work with someone that says, yeah, okay, this may be a bit of a challenge, but healing is a simple process, and I've got that down here. Healing is simple, it is so simple. It is, it, it's not easy, it doesn't, I mean, it can be easy. I find that it's often our, our, we ourselves that make it quite difficult, but it's really simple. And it's as simple as stay in the green zone. You stay in the green zone, you listen to how your body feels with the things that you're implementing in your, in your life, in your diet, in the supplements you take, in the therapies you do, in the treatments, the practitioners you work with. If you optimize staying in the green zone more, you get more green zone. If you stay in the red zone more, you get more red zone. It's really that simple. So optimize for the green zone. If you work with somebody that says, we're gonna be, you're gonna be suffering, you're gonna be miserable, but at the end of it, you'll be healed. That's bullshit. That, it does, healing does not work like that. You get more of what you are right now. You get more of what you're doing right now. If you're doing a protocol that makes you feel awful and you're suffering and you're sacrificing foods that you love and, and things like this, you're gonna get more of that in the future. That's not healing. If you work with a practitioner that's saying that, you're gonna get exactly that. It, it, it doesn't work. Whereas if you work with somebody that says, okay, healing is a gentle process. It's soft, it's gentle. We're working with the body. We're working to listen to the body's wisdom. We're gonna implement a change and see how the body responds to it. And then if you feel bad, we're gonna modify that. That's a golden practitioner, okay? Work with them, they're really good. They know what they're talking about because they understand it. The thing with practitioners, you really have to get the practitioner to take their ego out. The practitioner may come in thinking like, I know exactly what's going on, I'm gonna run you through my protocol, and I've got all of these supplements that I really like, and we're just gonna force the body to go through this process because this is how it was for me. That's not, that's not how it works. You need to implement, you can use your wisdom as, as a practitioner, or you can follow the advice of your, of your practitioner, but listen to how your body feels. If you take something and you feel bad, that practitioner, like, they're at home, they don't care, you know? I mean, they, maybe they do care, but at the end of the day, it's no big deal to them. They can just go home, enjoy the time with their family, enjoy their health. You're the one that's spending the day feeling awful, and you're the one that, by doing that, is making more awfulness manifest in the future, as that you're attracting more of what you're already doing. If you're doing things that make you feel bad, you will feel more bad in the future. If you're doing things that are making you feel good, you will feel more good in the future. That's, that's a, it's a simple principle, but that's really the way, that, the way that it works. So if you work with somebody that says it's gonna be really hard for you to heal, I absolutely guarantee you it's gonna be really hard for you to heal. And if you work with somebody that says it's gonna be simple, it doesn't have to be complex, it can be quite a simple process, then you're way more likely to get that. It's way more likely to be a simple process, and it really, really can be. So that's that principle. So down here, we've got three final points to wrap up this video. One, if you feel bad, you are doing it wrong. So either what you're trying is not the right thing for you, or your dose is wrong. Either your dose is in this area, in this red zone, or it's up here in this red zone. It's either too much or it's not, en or it's not enough. You're not in the sweet spot. And the thing is, if you're trying to do this with a supplement or a type of therapy that isn't actually helpful for your body, it has no green zone. It's all red, it's not helpful. Just don't do it. It's not helpful, there is no green zone. For me, I used, I used coffee enemas a lot. And my coffee enema green zone was very small as well, it was like here. 
And sometimes I would try to do stronger ones and then I couldn't sleep and I would get demethylated. So I'd run out of methyl donors and I would feel fatigued and I'd feel really bad. But sticking in the sweet spot made that grow. But now I've reached a point where my body doesn't need them anymore. I have no green zone for coffee enemas. My body doesn't need them. And if I do them, small dose, large dose, anything in between, I feel worse because my body doesn't need them anymore. So there's a red, it's, a, it's a red zone therapy for me, for me for now, which means not to do it. And that doesn't mean that I won't have a green zone for that therapy in the future. I may. And when I do, I'll, I'll try it. But it changes. And this is something that fluctuates. And you really have to judge it based on how the things make you feel. That's what's really important how you feel, how you f your body is telling you whether what you're doing is working or not. It's talking to you every second. Every symptom is a clue. Every reaction is a clue. It's a message. Your body's talking with you. Just listen to it. It has all the answers. All the healing is going to come from within you anyway. So if you can start listening, you're going to get that healing way, way faster. Second principle, your healing, uh, sorry, your body is smarter than you. Your body is smarter than you. Just plain and simple. That's, that's it. It's, it's, that's the statement. Your body is smarter than you. If you think that you know more than your body, you are wrong. If your practitioner thinks they know more than your body, they are wrong. This is, a, this is the principle that I use all the time. Every, every one of my clients, with myself as well, I'm like, hmm, I've got this thing coming up. Maybe I should do some research on this. Maybe I should try that. Maybe I should try that. And then I tune in with my body. I say, okay, body, what do you actually need? And my body communicates to me and I do it, even if it doesn't make sense. Last night for dinner, I had the strangest dinner in the world. I had two donuts, one slice of cheese on toast, a bowl of stir-fried cabbage covered in cheese, and a tea. It was like the most random thing, like who would have that as a meal? But that's what my body asked for, and that's what I gave it. And that's the internal wisdom. So there's a level of humility and a level of trust that you have to develop with your body because sometimes it's gonna tell you, and it's smarter than you. I don't, I don't have a fucking clue why it asked me to eat that food. I really have no idea. But it did, and I trust it, because it's smarter than I am. So I can get out of the way. I, this is getting out of my own way. You know, this is the thing. Get out of your way. Get out of your own way. Listen to what your body says and trust it. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. This morning, I woke up with a bellyache. My initial thought is, oh, this was probably because I ate like that last night. And I asked my body, is this because I ate, we ate like that last night? And it said, no, it's because you need to lay down for 40 minutes and rest. Lay down for 40 minutes, rested, completely fine. Bellyache gone, no problem. So we need to get out of the way. We need to listen to what the body is saying and give it what it needs, not what we want to give it or what your practitioner has told you to do. It's about building this level of communication with your body because it's smarter than you are. And it, know, it has every answer to every question that you could possibly ask. We just need to bridge that communication gap. Finally, healing is simple. It really is. Is it easy? Well, it depends. How easy is it for you to communicate with your body? Because when you can communicate it with it directly, it is very simple and it's also very easy. It can have its challenges at times, like say for example this morning I woke up and I have a bellyache. The instant thought process is, oh that's because of last night and you should not do that and these are bad foods and I try to like wrap myself up in this, in this thing and get in my own way. But taking the time to pause and sit down and say, okay, what's actually going on here? I was able to get out of my way and now it's really easy and now it's really simple and it doesn't have to be complicated. So healing is simple and if anyone tells you otherwise, then that's going to be true. So if someone tells you healing is this really complicated, arduous process that is painful and agonizing and you're going to have to suffer a lot and you go and work with them, their protocol is going to make you feel like that. Whereas if you find somebody that says healing is simple, it's a simple process, communicate with the body, we'll implement some strategic changes based on maybe testing, symptoms, different things, and then we see how your body responds and we modify what we're doing based on how your body responds to what we do, golden practitioner, go work with them, they'll have the solutions for you. And you need to do this yourself as well. I say golden practitioner because I, I understand it's, it's kind of, I'm in a tricky place because as a practitioner, I am kind of my own practitioner in many ways because I have this level of, of insight and I understand not everybody does. But I would encourage you, if you can, develop this level of, of understanding, communication and wisdom with yourself. Because no matter who you work with, even if you work with the, the I, mean, I don't know if there is a best practitioner in the world, even if you work with them, it's still all your responsibility and it's still all your work. So all of the answers that the practitioner needs are going to be coming through you and from your body anyway. So it's really important that we don't fall into that pattern of, handing off the responsibility of our healing to somebody else. It's always an intrinsic thing. It's always a self, healing is always self-healing. Every single time without exception. It's always self-healing. 
always, without exception. Even if you have somebody that is doing a healing modality on you, even if someone is doing healing on you, all they're doing is helping you to unlock your intrinsic healing abilities. All healing is self-healing. It all comes from within. So, and that's why it's simple, because it's, it's, it's already in you. You don't need to find it, it's already inside you. You just need to figure out how to unlock it. But it's a technicality, but it, it's simple, you know? It's there, it's, it's intrinsic already. So, takeaways from, from today's class, the Goldilocks zone. Find your sweet spot for healing, and, and this is gonna look different depending on where you are. If you're more sick, you have a smaller zone, and it's gonna be on this lower end of the spectrum, and it's gonna take more time to grow it. If you're in the middle, middle place, then this isn't a bad place to be. This is, this is quite okay. But your, as your zone has grown, it's increased now, we wanna we want make sure that we're on the top end of this. And if you're already feeling pretty healthy, making sure that you optimize this and pick those low hanging fruit can be amazing. You know, this can go from, this can be a night and day change from, I wake up in the morning, I feel tired, pick those low hanging fruit, you wake up and you're energized and motivated and you wanna work and you wanna change the world and you, like, like this morning, get up, I wanted, wanted, wanted to dance. So it's like, that's really cool, you get up, you dance. I mean, who, who has the opportunity to do that nowadays? It's such a, such a blessing to be able to do that. So if you're in this red zone, and you know you're in this red zone because the thing that you did to try to help you heal, the coffee enema, the probiotic, the juicing, the whatever it is, if it made you feel worse, you are not healing. It's not helping you. Either it's just the complete wrong thing for you, or you have the dose wrong. It's too much or it's too little. So optimizing that is really important. And if you do feel better doing it, then you're healing, congratulations. Just maintain that space. All you can do is make sure you're in that zone. You can't make it go any faster. Your body heals at its own time. You have no control over the speed. All you have control over is the direction. So if you're in the red, you're getting sicker. If you're in the green, you're getting healthier. So all you can do is choose red or green and then hold yourself there. And then the time will accrue, you will, you will accumulate healing as time goes on. So just make sure you're in the green zone and stick with it and just try to hit the green zone as much as possible for as many days as you can and you'll heal. That's it, it's really that simple. You become more of what you are. So this is really just what I was saying. If you are doing things that make you feel more sick, you're becoming more sick. If you're doing healing reactions or detoxes or things that make you feel bad, either you need to not be doing those or you need to be optimizing the dose so that you feel good. And again, if you're being healthy, you're getting more healthy. So if the things that you're doing are giving you more functionality, so if you're doing things that let you have more diversity in your diet, that let you exercise more, that let you socialize more, that let you do, that let you, so basically you can even hear, you can replace the word healthy with authentic self-expression. So if you're doing things that are allowing you to be more of your authentic self, you are moving towards healing. So keep doing that, that's really good. If you feel bad, you're doing it wrong. It's either the dose, either the dose is wrong or it's just the completely wrong therapy for you. So either stop doing it or figure the dose out. You, more often than not, you're, too, you're doing too much. You probably need to reduce it. It's very rare that people are underdoing it, but it is also possible. Your body is smarter than you. Be humble. Your body knows how to heal itself. Learn to listen. Learn to surrender to the process. Learn to listen to the wisdom that your body has to share with you and communicate. And anytime you have a symptom, anytime you have a reaction, anytime anything's happening, always ask the question, how is this the most unfathomably intelligent response to the situation or the environment that I'm currently in? Because it always is every single time, every single symptom is an adaptive response. Every single reaction is an adaptive response. There's always a reason. If you can figure out the reason, you can make it so that the adaptive response doesn't have to happen anymore. Then you don't have to have the symptom. Woohoo, that's great. And finally, healing is simple. If, any, if anybody tries to tell you otherwise, run away because they're just gonna make your healing process complicated. Healing is simple, it really can be. If you believe it and if you work with people that also believe that, you can have simple healing process. If somebody tells you it's complicated, somebody tells you it's gonna take years, then it's probably gonna be really complicated and it's probably gonna take years. So be careful who you work with and be careful what you believe as well. Because if you believe nobody can help you, I guarantee you, nobody can help you. It blows my mind the amount of people that book consultations with me and I say, do you think you can heal this? And they say, no. And I tell them, you are absolutely right because with that mindset, you will never heal this. If you don't believe you can heal it, you can't. But if you do believe you heal it, you can heal it, you can. So be careful what's your thoughts, be careful what you choose to believe because it will have a massive impact on whether what you do is successful or not.
So that's everything for me today. Let me just check, see if we have any questions. I don't know if we will, but let's find out. Crystal says, hi William. Lovely to have you Crystal, nice to see you. Lindsay says, how will you know how to find the Goldilocks zone? So it's, it's really about how you feel. If you're doing something and it's making you feel worse, you're out of the zone. If you're doing something and it's making you feel better, you're in the zone. It's, it sounds too simple to be, to be true, but it really is. Your body is a biofeedback machine. It's constantly giving you clues and indicators as to whether what you're doing is helping it or hurting it. And if you do something and your body feels better for it, then you're healing. And if you do something and your body feels worse from it, then you're, you're not healing. It's, it's quite simple, but again, so it's simple, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's easy or hard. It depends on your level of self-trust. It depends on the level of communication you have with your body, but this is a process. But you have to understand that the truth is, it is simple. And the truth is there to be accessed whenever you want. Whenever, whenever you want to access the truth, it's there. And it is simple, it's a simple process. But it's really determined by how you feel. That's the most important, that's the most important thing that I, can, that I can tell you. Julie, oh, lovely to have you, Julie. I hope you're having a, a really good day. Julie says, I love it. Just hearing the words makes my body relax. Good, because this is, so, this, so I would say that you listening to this video is a, is a green zone activity. So it's moving you more into this, into this green zone, which is good, because that relaxation is triggering healing. So th this, is, this is the thing for everything. It doesn't have to be a supplement or something you're doing like specifically to heal. This can be dancing. This can be socializing. This can be what type of YouTube videos are you watching? Like, do they make you feel better? If they make you feel better, then you're moving towards healing. It's really about building an intrinsic trust with your own internal guidance system as to moving towards what you want and away from what you don't want. And you do that based on how you feel. So follow, go towards what makes you feel better and move away from what makes you feel worse. But the thing that, that kind of frustrates me is in this, in this field of healing, you get told you kind of need to suffer a little bit so then you can heal and you need to go through this detox so you can heal and you need to go through this killing protocol so you can heal and that's not how it works. That's just not how it works. If you can go through one of those and feel better while you're doing it, then that's working for you. But if you're going through it and you're feeling worse, it's, that's bad, that's not helping you. So it's really just about how you feel. So uh, that's everything for today. Um, thank you everybody for coming. I hope you've, hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions afterwards, please feel free to let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.